Cattlemen stand behind a local research center that many animal rights groups are calling a house of horrors. We're going to take a closer look at the Meat Animal Research Center. Also, a lot of farmers showing disappointment with a property tax relief bill stalling in the legislature. And we take a look at an alpaca show. You're watching NTV's Grow. Denied. Lawmakers say no to the governor's plan to cut taxes on farmland. The bill by Senator Lydia Brash failed to advance out of committee. It will not go to the full legislature. Governor Ricketts said he's disappointed. He's joined in that sentiment by Nebraska Farm Bureau. When we recently talked to them, they were optimistic the measure would help farmers and ranchers. Uh, going from 75 to 65 percent of the valuation or even lower than that will help move us back into the balance, uh, closer balance that we had at one time. Schools said it would not result in property tax relief. They said the measure would force them to raise taxes at the local level and cancel out any tax cut. The new president of the Kansas Farm Bureau says the state needs to rebalance its property, sales and income tax plans. Rich Feltz worries property taxes may increase in the upcoming days of the legislative session as lawmakers struggle to close the budget hole. The GOP-dominated legislature must close a projected budget debt of nearly $600 million for the fiscal year beginning July. Should the nation ease ethanol mandates during a time of drought? There's a new study out there released that could generate some controversy. Agricultural economists at the University of Nebraska point to research that shows a mega drought could be coming. At the same time, the renewable fuel standard requires ethanol production to nearly double by 2022. That raises questions about raising corn for fuel. Economists question if the ethanol mandate should be eased during times like that. They argue the mandate made the corn shortage worse. A local ethanol producer makes news on Wall Street. Green Plains has formed a new subsidiary, which in turn has filed documents for an IPO, an initial stock offering. Green Plains expects to raise more than $200 million. The new subsidiary would consist of downstream ethanol transportation and storage assets in 12 states in the Midwest and Southeast. Green Plains operates plants in Central City, Ord, and Wood River. A New York Times report says animals suffer for profit, but a new finding shows that there's been no wrongdoing at a local research center. NTV's Steve White has more. Abusing animals in the name of profit. That's what the New York Times reports has been quietly happening the last half century at Mark, the U.S. Meat Animal Research Center. The Times reports cattle are bred to give birth to twins, resulting in deformities and death, while defenseless sheep are left to die. NTV visited the center during its 50th anniversary in 2014, where the director called it the largest cattle research center in the world. Dr. John Pollock said they've helped popularize cattle breeds like Simmental, Charlet, and Limousine, and told us the center's work has helped ranchers do things better. Our knowledge base is growing rapidly, and we're adding to it this uh, concept now of uh, having the production be sustainable from both the social environmental and economic component, which is bringing light to what producers have been doing for years anyway. Groups like the Humane Society of the United States call the center near Clay Center a house of horrors, with too much influence by what it calls factory farming. Now an independent panel has weighed in and finds no evidence of animal mistreatment. Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack does call for more oversight, something research partners at the University of Nebraska agree with. We certainly support those recommendations and would welcome any, any recommendations for how improved clarity and, and strengthened oversight could enhance our collaborations with USDA. The university has around 100 staff members at the center. University leaders stand by their work. Uh, so a lot of value that comes out of the center and, and our experience is that the people there care a lot for the animals. On his blog, the university's Dean of Agriculture calls the New York Times report more opinion than fact. Also, NTV reached out to an Iowa cattleman on a focus group at Mark. Dave Nichols calls the article 
a hit piece. He says the report focuses on anomalies and lacks an understanding of agriculture. Wayne Pacelli of HSUS calls it torture and says USDA needs to stop funding it, saying it's like giving government money to tobacco companies to make better cigarettes. The independent report finds the center does use best industry practices in many areas. And while animals are well cared for, needs better policies and more accountability. We have much more on our website, and of course you can find out there how you can also send in your opinions to the government. Researchers say that new school lunch guidelines could hurt the meat industry. There was not any clear uh, definitive reasoning as to why they actually recommended lower consumption of red and processed meats. New suggestions created by the Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee recommend eating less red meat and processed meat. But a Kansas State University meat specialist says these recommendations are more about sustainability than nutrition. He says one three-ounce serving of beef contains 10 nutrients and vitamins and only 125 calories. But the committee says producing the meat uses up a lot of resources. It's something that if probably in the next three years we will see a very defined legal uh, terminology for uh, sustainability and sustainable. But currently, if we look at sustainability, the ability to produce uh, food products from the same resources over a stretch of time, animal agriculture certainly has that done. These new dietary guidelines are creating an uproar in the cattle industry. Senator Deb Fisher responds with her disapproval. She joined 29 senators writing a letter to the USDA secretary and HHS secretary. The senators condemn a new report conclusion recommending to eat less red meat. One producer we spoke with says it's about more than money. There's pride in the quality of the beef product. Our main concern though, because we produce beef, is the health aspect of eating lean red meat. And so, you know, some people might say, well, sure, you're a cattle feeder, so of course you'd care, you, you have a monetary investment. Mm -hmm. But the whole purpose behind what we're doing is to produce a product we believe makes for a healthier person in society. Hall County leaders say that they are fed up with the stinky stuff that's being hauled away from a meat processing plant. And TV's Steve White has more on this stinky situation. It's truly unbearable. The uh, interior of your car can reek. I mean, it, it's pungent. Pam Lancaster says she's tired of the complaints. Chamnus Technology hauls manure to local farms. If it's not applied quickly, it stinks. If this does not go well, this is the last positive vote that they'll have from me to spread um, have Chamnus operate in this um, in this county under these circumstances. It's a byproduct of cattle slaughter and JBS Swift. Some say it's only natural to complete the cycle and build the soil that grows the corn the cattle eat. But some say this stuff smells more than normal cow manure, and there's a lot of it. They make two million pounds of waste every week at that plant. I understand. And we you have problem. to haul somewhere. Um, and so uh, it's fantastic fertilizer. And uh, we just have to be able to manage it properly. But county leaders say it hasn't been managed properly. Tons of it were left at a Donovan farm where neighbors complained about the stench. County leaders say some of the fault starts with the packing plant. The problem will be resolved when we have a composting area. And I think that that falls on Swift's back as well. We welcome them. We like having our JBFs. We like having them as an employer. We value them being in our county. But on the other hand, they have a responsibility to all of us as a good neighbor. Hall County leaders say they've just about had enough. It's time to call a halt to this if people can't do what they say they'll do. Nebraska's Ag Director traveled to Southeast Asia to promote Nebraska products. Greg Ibaugh is traveling between Malaysia and the Philippines as part of the trip. He'll meet with potential customers from Burma and Thailand. According to Ibaugh, agricultural experts into the area have doubled over the past five years, from $2.7 billion in 2009 to $5.4 billion in 2014. In the same time span, the market for Nebraska beef entering the Philippines increased eightfold. The governor expands the Nebraska beef brand to New York City. Governor Pete Ricketts released his plan not too long ago. The idea came from a restaurant in London, which serves only Nebraska beef. Now, after a learning journey, several U.S. wheat organizations are joining in for a call to Congress to end the U.S. trade embargo.
Wheat representatives say the visit was an important first step toward a stronger relationship with Cuba. They also state Cuba is the biggest wheat importer in the Caribbean and our own policies are keeping us from working together again. They also say, quote, it's not good for farmers or for the Cuban people. End quote. Food prices are expected to rise once again this year. Eggs and other grocery store items will be going up to price around 2 to 3 percent this year. That's the word from exports with USDA's Economic Research Service. But they also point out that how much more you spend will depend on how you shop. Are you the type of shopper that sticks more towards the perimeter of the store or do you stick more towards the center aisles? Because a lot of the items within the center aisles are the ones that we've seen slightly lower than average inflation. So if you buy more of the those products, you might not feel as much of an increase at the grocery store as if you're buying more beef, if you're buying more produce, um, those sorts of items. Experts say beef will again be the price leader this year, going up around 5 to 6 percent. However, despite inflation, the food in the U.S. is still a good deal. So overall, Americans do spend a smaller percentage of their earnings and overall expenditures on food than the rest of the world. A 2013 survey showed the average American spending 12.9 percent of their expenditures on food. Sharing the story of agriculture, now KRVN's Mike Laporte gets an honor. He was recognized by the Nebraska Corn Board. He received the Media Appreciation Award, and Laporte has been at KRVN and Rural Radio Network for 25 years. For the last four years, Mike has done a daily live Skype report on NTV. A big congratulations to Mike Laporte. Foreign trade is worth billions of dollars in Nebraska. We catch up with Adrian Smith and talk more about the issues coming up after the break. Don't go anywhere.